I don't think I've ever been more excited to share a YouTube video with you guys. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and enjoy this video. So I recently saw one of Paul David's videos where he does the solo challenge with a bunch of different guitarists. And I thought that's such a cool idea. And I wish we had it for jazz guitarists. Now when he does it, he does it with the same backing track that all these guitarists play over. And I thought for jazz guitarists, we should do the same song, the same standard, but I, I would allow each of the guitarists to make it their own. They pick the tempo, key, whether they wanna do it solo or with the backing track. Do what jazz guitarists do best in just trying to create their own arrangement, their own version of it, but all pick the same song. And the one that, that I thought would work really well for this that I personally have never liked is the song Autumn Leaves. I could never find a good guitar version of Autumn Leaves. So I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone here and get 10 of my favorite guitarists to all play over Autumn Leaves. So then I have no excuses for having good versions of Autumn Leaves and neither do you. And let's see what they do with it. So that's what we're gonna do. I have 10 awesome guitars here lined up for you and we're going to check out their versions as well as their explanation for what they do in their performance. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy the show. Okay, so first up we have my guitar teacher from UNF, Mr. Barry Green. Let's check it out. And first I'd just like to say thank you to Chase Maddox for having me take part in this. I was really excited when he explained to me what uh, we were going to do and uh, I'm honored to be with the company of these amazing guitar players. So Chase asked me to kind of discuss things that I was doing or going for in that particular version of Autumn Leaves. So there's just a couple of things I thought I would touch on. And the first thing is just the initial reharmonization of the melody. So when I started, instead of playing a C minor seven chord, I started with D flat minor nine chord a half step higher, which is nice because the third of C minor becomes the ninth on that sub. So it really works beautifully with, with the uh, melody. And incidentally, I'm doing this in G minor. <clears throat> so the first chord is C minor seven. But what's really nice is the uh, continuation of that. In other words. And that would take me all the way to the beginning of the minor two five, you know, G minor. So it just works great with the melody. So it's just, it's just a really fun um, chromatic 2-5, and I like playing over that, and it's, it's a great way to just practicing, or to practice some sequencing ideas. And the thing, I know I'm almost getting into a guitar lesson here, I'm not meaning to do that, but very quickly, that even if your rhythm section is just playing the standard changes to autumn leaves, because that's such a powerful sound, that sound of chromaticism, you could play that, it'll just sound like you're skating above everybody else. It's a very, very, very cool sound. An example might be, uh, um, So that was kind of a simplistic idea of it, but you, you do get the uh, idea. And another thing I wanted to try to get to during that performance were the, the three note voicings. Uh, you know, a lot of this I heard um, Pat Metheny do, but voicings like this, like for C minor, it's just root three and five. But they're so pretty. I think I played it something like this. Uh, So those are the, you know, those are two things that, like I said, uh, I intentionally had thought about prior to the performance. Um, you know, for those of you guys who know me, I just like to pick up the guitar and just start playing and hopefully some good stuff comes out of it, you know? So, uh, like I said, I, it's a dangerous thing. I know I've gotten myself in trouble trying to work things in that I'm kind of, you know, preparing or practicing. Enjoy the rest of the guitar performances and uh, thanks.
gentlemen. So thank you, Barry. Um, I'm eternally grateful, obviously, for your submission, but also for your teaching. For those of you who don't know, Barry was my teacher at University of North Florida, and I owe a lot of my own guitar playing, and obviously this channel then, to his teaching. So thank you for that. Man, a lot of great stuff. I wanted to start off with Barry. I, I love so much about Barry's playing. It's, it's one of the reasons I wanted to study with him. And, you know, you guys can check out more from Barry at his site, Barry Green Video Lessons, as well as his YouTube channel. Links for all of these guitarists will be in the description below, so make sure to check those out. And I'll point out certain things you guys can check out to follow up on these guys and see what they're up to, because all of them are up to some really awesome stuff as we go through the video. So keep watching. Okay, next up we have Dan Wilson. So my approach to this version of Autumn Leaves just involves, you know, sort of like a boogaloo type feel. I've, I've always liked that. You know, I always try to approach that uh, that kind of chromatic two five. But I, I try not to overdo it, so I, I just do it uh, on on this part. You know, I always like that motion. Also, one thing I employed was uh, kind of this this thing I, I pulled from Monk. A lot of times, like when he would play solo, you know, you hear these kind of kind of honking bass notes. You know, fall, followed by a. Uh, uh, chord. So a lot, of time, a lot of times I'll do one, three, seven chord. And it gives a real uh, kind of disjunct feel to the tune. So like. You know, it gives that, that type of feel to it. Other than that, I kind of just winged it. So. Hopefully, it came off.
it's so cool to hear all of these different takes so far we just got two and already we can start to see some of the differences i love how dan threw in that different feel um going into that what he's calling the boogaloo feel so cool um and obviously dan's doing dan things playing uh, all those crazy lines and a, a lot of the concepts there actually remind me of the courses that we've filmed with dan and we have a new one actually coming out with him called harmonic freedom which you can check out in the waiting list below as well as check out Dan's new album, Things Eternal. So a lot of great stuff to check out. Let's go on to the next one. Next up is a guy I'm sure you're familiar with. This is Mr. Tim Lurch. Oh, hey, Tim here. Uh, thanks for including me in this challenge. I had a fun time doing it. Uh, Autumn Leaves is one of these venerable tunes and sometimes it's a little hard to find interesting things to say without getting too wild with reharmonization or outside ideas. Uh, what I tried to do is just, um, you know, make a nice, uh, pretty version of it uh, uh, with some nice harmonies and uh, this sort of contrapuntal approach that I take to playing. I was playing with my fingers and this guitar is tuned down one whole step. The entire guitar is tuned to what I call D standard. By the way, everybody's gonna ask, these are Lawler Charlie Christian pickups for Telecaster. I recorded it by playing straight into uh, Princeton Reverb, and uh, that's about it. Um, really straightforward. And I was using two pickups at once, uh, the, the neck and the middle pickup, so it gives it, to my ears, it's a little bit like uh, a Fender Rhodes kind of quality to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it, uh, and thanks again for uh, listening.
lurch everybody man what a great version i really love what he did especially at the beginning going from mainly rubato and then going into a time feel and he's using a lot of effects that were really effective i think um, such as the artificial harmonics you know changing where his right hand placement was even when he was picking and and doing some like scrapes across to create all these different effects just really a master at creating a lot of emotion out of this kind of chord solo. So thanks to Tim for doing this and you guys can check out more from him at timlurch.com. Next up we have Raul Midon. Let's check it out. This song is in the key of G major or E minor, which is the relative minor of G major. So one can play the whole thing by playing just a G major scale. So I started out by trying to play some melodies all in all in G major uh, and then what I started to do was to on the five chords to try to play some altered scales so so that's so on the five chord I'm playing an altar chord. Uh, at one point, I did one little thing, a little giant step substitution, which is a little bit more advanced. But basically, you can play a giant step substitution on any song. So on, on this song, for instance, on this, this uh, A minor, right? Now, I, now on, instead of on the five chord, you can play... Yeah. That's the giant step substitution, and then go back. So that's a basically a little explanation of what I did. But basically with this song, as, a, as it's starting out, you can play the whole thing. All in G major. And of course, I'm playing all the different modes of G major, but basically you can play the whole thing in G major and then you can start to alter the chords uh, on this, on the, so that's, that's a D flat nine. You can then alter that, right? So uh, that's a, a basic explanation. Let's play Autumn Leaves.
So cool to see Raul's version of this. You know, I think it's really interesting, especially coming after Tim Lurch's version, seeing how they both approach that finger style very differently. And also in the way that Raul solos compared to a lot of the other guys that we've seen so far. You know, starting off a lot of lines and, and setting that groove right from the start, which is awesome. And throwing in some minimal chord accompaniment to his own solo. My point in all of this is just to show that there's a lot of different ways of approaching these tunes. And hopefully you can see from these different master guitarists that you can really make any sort of standard your own using these different ideas. So hopefully these serve as some inspiration for you. Check out more from Raul at raulmidon.com. And you can check out his music as well. I think he has a new album coming out next year. So you're gonna definitely wanna check that out. Okay, now let's check out John's story. You know, Autumn Leaves is one of those tunes that we learn early on when we're studying jazz. And I think it's because the melody has got such a beautiful way it develops. It's got this first statement, the autumn leaves, followed by the second, peek through my window, ba do do day, ba do do day. And it's such a good opportunity when we're improvising to sort of match that idea. Um, I think when I was playing right there, um, I just wanted to jump right into the melody and just play those phrases kind of out of time right next to one another. Um, I've been experimenting a lot recently with fragmenting my, my phrasing a little bit more, uh, especially in a solo guitar setting because we have so much freedom to sort of mess around with the phrase and the time. Um, and then when I started soloing, I kind of stuck with the chords for a minute and sort of pushed myself harmonically maybe a little bit away from the from the shore of the melody, to use a, an analogy like that. And that kind of got me out thinking a little bit more outside harmony, a little bit more implying some of the altered chords in these two fives. Um, but overall, I think the most important thing when we're practicing solo guitar on a tune like this, or when we're approaching a tune um, that's this, this classic, I think it's really important that we always are aware of the melody and that we're always paying attention to that ebb and flow of the melody, the architecture of the melody. So that was my approach on that. Uh, I hope we get to do more of these, Chase. It's always fun to uh, get to collaborate with you guys at Jazz Memes. Have a great day. See you guys. is John Story's version. One of my favorite things here that he does is the dynamic. So starting off very simply with just the single note lines and then slowly building up to fuller chords. By the time those chords come in, it feels really, really lush. It's, it's a great way of arranging a chord melody like this. And I know John's a master arranger, has, has done a lot of arrangements and has experience with that. 
So it's, it's cool to see that in action in solo guitar setting. Um, we actually have another course with John coming out, and this is focused on what he's basically presenting here, which is chord melody, some ways of getting into solo guitar, and his approach to it, as well as showing how he uses finger style to create these interesting chord melodies. So that's worth checking out in the links below. Now let's take a listen to Jonathan Stout, or as he's better known, Campus 5. Hey guys, my name's Jonathan Stout, and I am a pre-bop guitar player. I specialize in playing swing music. And I was so excited to be asked for this project, but when I saw what tune it was, I was hesitant at first, because the way most people play Autumn Leaves now um, is kind of part and parcel of what makes more modern styles of jazz distinct from the stuff that I play. Um, and I found my way in because I took a look at some of the original sheet music for this song, and it had much simpler changes. And once I found those, that was kind of my way in. So for example, when they play the opening A minor to D7 to G, they never go to the C. Just, so it's just basically a two, five, one in G uh, without going to the four chord. So you, you kind of have some time to spend in G without having to jump to the four chord and then cycle back around to the relative minor. Um, same thing on a lot of the kind of two fives to E minor. Rather than doing a half diminished, it would just be the five chord the whole time. Um, and simplifying the changes in that way kind of helped me not have to make it so much of a steeple chase. Um, and uh, the two solos that I, I played for you guys, one was sort of based on something somebody like Alan Roos might play, the chord style, um, and the electric was something that, you know, Charlie Christian might play, that kind of idea on electric. Um, when it comes to the Alan Roos stuff, um, Alan Roos was somebody that played with Benny Goodman, and um, he was a student of George Van Epps. And unlike most of his contemporaries, he sort of took what they were doing in the chord melody space, but he just had this way of sliding it around and making it phrase in a way that it sounded more swinging. So instead of just playing like a simple A minor to D7 to G thing, where you just kind of play a static voicing and then walk a melody over it, do that, but he would add these slides in ways to make it really swing. So, so either sliding one voicing around or sliding between two different uh, positions of, of voicings on the same chord really helps it swing. Um, and uh, a lot of times he's not doing anything more than just playing really basic triads, but cleverly superimposing them in a way. So like a lot of those two fives to G when the way if you look at what he's playing on the fingerboard really looks more like four to five to one. And guess what? In swing, your four chord is always a six chord. Your one chord is also always a six chord. But a four six is the same notes as your two minor seven. So C six is um, uh, A minor seven. So for example, in a two five to G, I played something that looks to me and feels to me like a, a C chord. So it's funny how, even though it's exactly the same notes, by changing the context of what note, what chord you call it, you can come up with different ideas. Um, on the electric side, I really wanted to showcase the way that, especially earlier styles of jazz, when they would see a 2-5-1 sequence, they wouldn't necessarily play the 2-5 or the 1. They would just play a big, long 5 chord idea and then resolve. Or they would play some kind of diatonic sequence over the whole thing. So um, I stole this kind of idea inspired by something that Barney Kessel did in 1944. He goes like <laughs> on and the Blues. And rather than doing kind of a chromatic thing, I thought over that big long 2-5-1 to G, I was like <laughs> just kind of playing a melodic sequence over it, just diatonically in the key. And um, you know, great players like Louis Armstrong were always kind of floating above the changes without having to spell them. And a lot of times the best sounding note isn't the guide tone and highlighting the change from one chord to another by kind of showing the change in guide tones is it actually less melodically satisfying. Um, so I wanted to inspire you guys to, to think about it that way. Um, I also stole kind of a Lester Young style rip like, but kind of doing that into a minor chord. Anyway, I hope you guys dug it, and uh, see you soon. Cheers.
wanted to do here is just show you another guitarist who takes us in a totally different direction. And one of the things Jonathan's known for is this sort of early swing, pre-bop style of guitar. And I was really curious what his take on this would be in that style. So autumn leaves, but completely different than any of these other guys would do it. A lot of Charlie Christian type of ideas and these early chord solo, um, a lot of like sliding chords and a lot of stuff that Jonathan, again, does very well. So if you're into this kind of style, check out more from him at Campus5 and campus5.com. Up next, we have a guitarist you may not know, but you should, Max Light. Hi everybody, my name is Max Light. Thanks for checking out my Autumn Leaves solo guitar improvisation. I'll talk a little bit about what I was thinking about while I was improvising it. Basically tried to improvise some kind of intro, introduction, considering the, um, the changes of the tune, but mostly just following my ears, trying to consider voice leading um, and developing a satisfying chord progression that would lead me into uh, a dominant chord that sets up the beginning of the tune. And then from there, I kind of just played the melody, tried to consider some harmonic ideas, some, um, some maybe alter alternative sort of chord changes that I could use to develop some color under the melody while still keeping the melody and the voices very, very clear. Um, and also trying to kind of um, sing in my mind what I heard as, as the melody on, on the top of this, uh, this kind of alternative harmony I was playing underneath it. I played it mostly rubato, maybe I played a little bit of time in there, but I felt that maybe solo guitar, it's, it's a little easier to um, play, play with time when you're, play with time and play with harmonic and melodic content when you don't have to play within a delineated um, kind of time zone. So that's usually how I approach solo guitar playing, just playing very rubato. Um, some other things I considered are just uh, some enharmonic relationships, maybe, um, some ways of finding alternative chord changes using pitches that exist maybe in two keys. For instance, I think at the top of the bridge, when I play um, G, F sharp, G, A into the top of the bridge, I think I played like an F sharp minor just for some color, just for a, a very rapid harmonic shift. Just things like that, you know, looking for relationships all over the place. Yeah, had a lot of fun doing it. Thanks very much.
So Max has some awesome things going on in his playing. If you haven't checked him out, definitely check him out. What I really love about what he's doing here is his use of counterpoint and, and these inner voices that he's working with, as well as some of his voicings. You can also tell in the way that he's playing through some of the lines when he'll throw these in. Um, you can obviously tell he's got chops as well. Is he, he uses like a lot of these big spreads to the way he's playing his ideas and the voicings. And it's a totally different approach than what we've seen so far. So again, check out more from Max in the links below. And now we have Dave Stryker. Let's take a listen. To me, the three big things in music, sound, rhythm, harmony. So what I was trying to show there is to really keep the rhythm happening when you're playing uh, music, whether you're playing in a, in a band situation or playing solo, the rhythm should always be there. Uh, it should feel good. It should be in the pocket. And uh, so that somebody listening doesn't miss anything. So, you know, you, you can just do it all yourself. Uh, so I hope you got some ideas from that, uh, sloppy as it was, whatever. But uh, the idea is just to keep that momentum and keep that groove happening, no matter whether it's a, in a big group or just by yourself. You want to have that, those, uh, the, the rhythm feeling good, man, right here, all right? Good luck with it. All right, the leaves of autumn. Awesome. So Dave Stryker, everybody. Man, some really cool things that he's doing here. I really liked how he used octaves transitioning into the bridge portion of the melody. Really gives a, a nice little break from just playing the melody straight up for the A sections. So that's super cool. And just the general feel of his solos. Like he, you can tell he's really keeping the groove there the whole time and throwing in some cool double time stuff. It, it just has a great like bluesy feel while also throwing in a lot of great jazz lines and ideas. So you can check out more from Dave Stryker. Use his Artist Works link in the description below or just davestryker.com.
been down to the wire. Next up, we have Mr. Graham Dector. Let's check it out. Uh, so my goal in putting together this arrangement was to find a musical way uh, to play through all the keys without drawing too much attention to the actual key changes. Now, the way I set out to do this was by using the, the tune's melody as the primary way of seamlessly leading us from one key to the next. Uh, so, really quickly, let's establish the song's form, which is a 32-bar AAB form, uh, A sections being 8 bars a piece and the B section being 16 bars. Uh, in the original melody, the first measure of both A sections is a minor third melody note on top of a minor seventh chord. I'll play this, uh, this phrase for you in the key of E minor where the notes are E, F sharp, G, C, landing on an A minor seventh chord. Now let's say we're playing the song in E minor and we want to modulate to F minor. Uh, a subtle way of doing this is to simply play that same pickup phrase in the key of E minor without changing any of the notes and shift the first chord of the next chorus, which is normally an A minor in the key of E, uh, up a half step. So instead of the C landing on an A minor 7th chord, it now lands on a B flat minor 7th chord. Effectively changing the first melody note of the next chorus to a natural ninth as opposed to a minor third, and just like that, we're in a new key. Uh, this was the first pivot point within the song's form uh, that I used to modulate to a new key, and the other pivot point I used was in the last bar of the first A section leading into the first bar of the second A section. And that, in a nutshell, is how I moved through the tune in all 12 keys. Uh, hope you enjoyed my rendition of the song, and uh, hope this technical breakdown gives you a new musical tool to work with when coming up with your own arrangements.
a cool version. What a powerful version of Autumn Leaves. Man, obviously Graham has got a lot going on in his playing. Thanks Graham for doing this. So a couple things that I wanna point out and just mention. You know, he talks about how he was moving this through all 12 keys. And what's cool is it's taking that same concept that Barry was using and talking about at the very beginning of this video and just showing how we can even develop some of these ideas in other directions, continue them in other keys in this case. Um, but what I like about it is it didn't come across in listening to it as like a, a, a technical or intellectual exercise. It sounded so musical throughout. I almost wouldn't know that it's going through all 12 keys in the way he's doing it because you're really just captured by the harmony and the lines that he's playing, the melodies. It's all focused on the music and the, the feel of it while he's doing this really cool um, technique going through all the 12 keys. So awesome version. You guys can check out more from Graham on Instagram at Graham Dector as well as get a lesson from him and check out his sheet music in the links in the description below. So check those out. Last but certainly not least, we have Mr. Cecil Alexander. Let's take a listen. So in my take on this tune, one concept I tried to use a lot of was double timelines. I think double timelines can be a really great way of creating momentum and forward motion and you're playing over standards. Uh, one great way to create double timelines, I think, is by incorporating a lot of uh, chromatic enclosures and approaches. Uh, so a sample idea that I might play over C minor 7, the first chord in the tune, would be... So a uh, pretty fast idea, but um, it's kind of comprised of a couple smaller pieces. So I have this uh, sort of uh, C minor triad with an approach note before the uh, flat third, and then an enclosure to get back into the root. Then I go up the scale, and then I use this enclosure um, to outline the fifth, or to highlight the fifth degree. Uh, another concept that I used a lot in my take on this tune um, was the idea of substitutions. Um, so something that I think about a lot is uh, how I can set up different chords in the tune. So, uh, for example, one spot that I like to highlight a lot is uh, when you're on B flat major seven, going into E flat major seven. Uh, sometimes I might just bypass the B flat major seven altogether and play sort of an E seven sound or E seven sus. So I might just kind of play out of the E mixolydian scale. Uh, which is going to create a lot of tension over that B flat major seven. So, so there it is over the B flat root, but over E, it sounds pretty inside, right? Um, and using that, again, it's going to get you a lot of tension. Uh, it's going to create a lot of interest in your lines. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cecil Alexander, everybody. So it's really interesting also to hear a trio version of Autumn Leaves. So, you know, he has the bass and the drums going. That's super cool. And we can really see how his take has a, a mix of techniques, right? So obviously the double timelines, that's one thing that Cecil's really known for. Super clean double timelines. Sounds great. But also want you to focus on some of the blues elements that he's using. You know, like he hits that heavy bend midway through the solo. Um, and, and some of these really great jazz melodic ideas like vocab. You can tell he's checked out a ton of records and, and has really dived deep into that. He's throwing in some of these quotes and, and some classic ideas that, that give it such a balance um, between the double time and uh, melodic ideas. So I'm a huge fan of Cecil's playing. You guys can check out more from Cecil on Instagram. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I did. If you guys would like to support these artists, which I'm encouraging you to do so, please, please, please check out the links in the description. Check out the guys that you're into. Like and comment below. This was a huge effort on the part of all these artists, so thanks to them. Thank them in the comments below. And if you guys want more of this, please do me a favor. Like, comment, share this with somebody. Share it in a Facebook group, in a community that you're a part of so that more people check this out. And then I can do more videos like this if it does well. So help me help you blow this video up. Thanks guys for tuning in and you guys can check out more on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. My work here is done.